teach an undergraduate class on Jesus, and in the first class, I had students read the Gospel of Mark from start to finish in one sitting. It's, I tell them, we think the oldest gospel is the shortest gospel. And then at the first class, I say, now you have read the Gospel of Mark. And Mark gives away his point in the first verses of the Gospel, saying, I am going to tell you about Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God. Mark says, I'm going to tell you about God, Jesus Christ. Then I say to the students, now, who can define God for me? Uh, let, what is God like? And they begin to call out the characteristics. God is omnipotent. God is omniscient. God has a plan. Uh, God can do anything God wants. Uh, God is up there. We're down here. God is eternal. We're mortal. Said, okay, good. Now, Mark says Jesus Christ is the Son of God. God. Now, after you read Mark's Gospel, can you think of something that Jesus said or did that illustrates these characteristics of God? And they fall silent. Then one says, you know, I was bothered when that blind man came up to Jesus and said, Master, let me receive my sight. And so Jesus touches him and uh, says, how's that? And the man says, well, it's better, but people still look like trees walking around. So Jesus says, well, let me try one more time. And uh, it really bothered me. It took Jesus two tries to, to, to heal him. Another student speaks up and says, you know, what I found offensive was Jesus is baptized and is tempted and then he begins his ministry. And how does he begin his ministry? By calling these 12 yokels that are really poor disciples and they're dumb at the beginning and they're dumber by the they're at the end. They stay dumb. I just, if he wants to change the world, how come he doesn't just like change the world if he's God? I said I gather You've never worked with Jesus. This, this is the way he gets things done. But you can see that. In fact, I think I could demonstrate Jesus Christ was crucified because he just didn't measure up to our expectations for God. Occasionally, I get trapped by some pagan or secular faculty member at some social gathering. This happened to me at the uh, cocktail party to welcome new faculty just this fall. I was uh, trapped between a large piece of furniture in the president's house and a corner uh, in, and forced to be in conversation with a social scientist. And uh, when he found out I was a pastor uh, and teaching at the Divinity School, he found it necessary to lecture me on his theology. And uh, he said, you know, I could never be religious because I am so ethically sensitive. Uh, and we all know that religion is the cause of all the violence and bloodshed <coughs> and wars. Uh, in the world, and the fanaticism uh, behind the religious people who think you know so much about God, because after all, God is beyond definition, God is large, and we're small, and uh, I'm thinking, look, I didn't try to evangelize you, <laughs> don't you leave me alone, or I'm sitting there thinking, wow, this is so profound. Let me write this down. I need, I'm going to need this. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, all those people who say, you know, the problem with you religious people, you, you 
think you really know who God is. And uh, therefore, you're always trying to arm wrestle everybody else into your view of God. And to, to act like you really know who God is, that, that makes you fanatical and you want to cram that down everybody else's throat. And, and uh, you, you, you should be more modest in your God claims. You should be more uh, reticent to, to say, oh, we have seen God. And, you know, I, I can sort of see their point. If Christians believed what they believe, we believe about God. Uh, if you believe that God is omnipotent, all-powerful, potentia absoluta, as Aquinas put it, if you believe that about God, then, well, you want to be real sure you're on the side of that God. Uh, if there's a war, uh, you want to be sure you're on God's side of that war, and you want to be sure that that powerful God is claimed to be on your side. And uh, somebody running around that, that doubts that God, that all-powerful uh, God, well, then, then you need, that, that person has got to be uh, argued into submission. That, that person is, you've got to be sure you're on the side of this pure, powerful God. You've got to fight for that God. You, that's, that's a God that is this potentate that has got, whose honor must be defended. And, uh, and yet this night, this night in the gathering dark, this night on this Friday we call good, this story we have to tell this night, we're making a claim about the identity of God. We, we believe that this story that we narrate tonight is a true story about who God really is. It's a story about our violent reaction when we found out that God was not who we had imagined God to be. It, it was a, a story of mocking on the part of the world who, who looked at this bedraggled tortured half to death Nazarene and said that 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 can't be king but much less God who is God that is what is reality all the way down what is the, the first and final truth about this world and who has it? The truth about where we have come from and where we are headed. Who is God? When you get down to it, that's really the only question that matters. That's really the only good reason to be here. Who is God? Listen to the story. Hear the music. Sit in this gathering dark. Here is the truth that convinces us. God is a man on a cross, loving people who don't know how to love him. That's God. I'm sorry. Jesus Seminar and others, uh, the first disciples didn't take this sweet Galilean rabbi and then pump him up to the level of God. What they experienced was that in Jesus Christ, God came down to our level, took on our flesh, climbed down to us. They didn't simply say, well, 
Jesus has some really good things to say and did some mighty things and wow, it, it's almost just like he stopped if we could just inflate him a bit more. No. They said, you know, we had the wrong idea about God. We thought God was up there, we were down here. Uh, God is not who we thought God to be. God is a man on a cross loving people who don't love him. That's the faith that holds us this night. A man on the cross who is God loving people who don't love him.